Welcome. And, and, and I'll just use that if I, if I run into the audience. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Who are you and what do you do? Um, yeah, so um, like uh, Roland said, I'm Michiel Jong. Uh, I'm from the TU Delft and I currently work in the library and I work on a number of things. Yeah. So uh, technically I'm an, a researcher, a lecturer, pr project manager and also creative facilitator, so I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, I would yeah. say. Uh, what I work on is um, uh, forwarding the uh, movement of open education. So. How can we apply open access principles to education? Also, how can we uh, enrich education further using this as a basis? And apart from that, I'm also working on, let's say, institutional transformation, seeing how we can, uh, on a large scale, change the way institution, uh, the institutions of the TU Delft think about, uh, thinks about uh, things like this, uh, like open access. What, what do we see here? Is there something you, you made up? A scribble of your... Yeah, so uh, what's, what's very nice about this picture is um, uh, we have a uh, faculty called uh, uh, Industrial Design Engineering and these are all students who are uh, very equipped to uh, make technical drawings. So when I uh, want to uh, draw out an idea in my mind, I, I can talk to one of those students, sit down for half an hour and just say, oh, I'm thinking of this and I want to do that. And then they just draw something like this. So what we're looking at here is uh, a sort of uh, uh, a journey people can go through when they enter our library and all the kinds of things they can interact with um, that concern education. So um, this is, I've, I've, I've made this to, to show you what, for what kind of reasons would someone come to the TU Delft library to engage with education. So for starters, people come to our library, that, that's, that's one of the first things everybody knows, right? You come to the library because we have books, we have readers, we have the educational collection. Um, but once, once we're there, we also see that people who want to publish work, uh, educational work, for example, have to deal with plagiarism, especially students who have to, uh, to publish student works, their, uh, their theses, for example. They have to deal with plagiarism. And uh, our library supports them with that as well. Um, then we have a lot of interaction with them in our digital learning environment. So uh, as a library, we identify ourselves as information specialists. And uh, we train our students with managing information sources and also working with them, using them, citing them. This is all done through our digital learning environment. And um, then, uh, yes, of course, we, uh, we offer courses. We teach students how to deal with information. And uh, we, uh, we, we reach students from all ends. So PhD students, master students, bachelor students, we teach them skills education. And then finally, we come to, uh, uh, to the real innovation part here, and that is how can we use all of these things to, uh, to make education more available, to, to improve the accessibility and the usefulness and the quality of education. Yeah, and, and, and you're working with what, what I was told, open textbooks. Is that the correct term? Yeah, that's right. So um, I think that um, we have been working now for almost a year and a half on designing a, uh, a system where we can, uh, it, it's, it's essentially a lean approach to uh, helping people publish educational literature. So um, we were talking about how to, um, uh, uh, how, how, to, how to acknowledge someone's excellence when doing research, right? It's the same with teaching, but, uh, but teaching for a lot of uh, academic staff is, is considered essentially a, a, a time sink, right? You just pour, tons and tons of time in it, and you don't really get a lot back for, for it. And I think that's a problem. So, uh, but the problem here essentially is that we need a way to, 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 to recognize, to quantify this excellence. And a way to do that is to, or a way that we designed to do that is to start publishing educational literature, throw it out into the world, make it available to everyone, and then see what the impact of these, of these works are. Yeah. And how, how do you measure that, the impact? So yeah, that's uh, uh, that's that's still um, in the, in a very early stage, of course, because there is no precedent for this, uh, or at least not in education. There is no impact factor of educational material. So um, it's, it's trial and error, it's finding out what works, how you can do this. Yeah. So 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 what would you consider uh, uh, valuable, right? How many people download something, or how many people read it, how many people use it in their courses, how many u other universities? A part of it, how many people have changed your book into something that they like? So, yeah. And is it so far, uh, has it been an easy part, so to say? Has everyone been cheering to you, say, oh, that's great what you're doing, and if you need more time and money, please tell us, and we were willing to give it to you, or is it a hard struggle? So, yeah, at, at first we had to be pragmatic, right? Because 
this as, as any innovation project sounds like, yeah, there is golden mountains, but this also will cost me hours and hours on end, right? So we started by using these channels that we have with students and teachers to just, uh, let's, uh, let's see, what's, what's the actual problem? What, what, what are the sounds that we hear? So maybe Dan, you can yeah. show some of the, okay, so, so let, me, let me read these out, right? So yeah. teachers are telling me, so when we engage with teachers uh, 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 to help them with their education, with, with forwarding their education, they, they say things to me like, students are not bringing their textbooks to class, or I want to write a book that is an alternative to the course literature, or I want to use existing educational resources in my course. Yeah. So these seem to be uh, that so, so these seem to be remarks that that, that contradict the use of uh, commercial traditional textbooks, right? Yeah. And students, for example, say I don't I simply do not buy those commercial textbooks; they're too expensive, and I just use the reader or the college notes to study, and I pass my courses just fine, right? So. These are the sounds that we hear, and um, uh, um, uh, using this, uh, we have actually started designing a way of, uh, of, of answering these questions or to, to dealing with these issues. Because, of course, teachers also see that their students aren't buying textbooks, right? I mean, if you're a teacher yourself, um, you must have seen this uh, is happening. And I think this is an important issue that we have with uh, a dif differentiation within a classroom, right? So. If uh, you ask your students to buy a 120 euro textbook and only a third of them does, and the other two thirds do not have access to it, um, you, you, you enter your classroom, you expect your students to be up to speed, and suddenly only one third of them know what you're talking about. The other two thirds are just looking around or trying to share books. And this all makes your teaching a lot more problematic, right? So th this is a first step in also streamlining the teaching that we do. Yeah. And how's that first step going so far? Because we, oh, we see a picture of accessibility, so this is what you've just been talking about. This is the, the problem we have. Some students are in front, some are taken back. Yeah, so, so I, think, I think this is the, the initial first step we did. Right? So, so what we started with, what we started with uh, a year and a half ago was uh, finding teachers who had this, these things. like uh, right. So, so there, there, there's the college notes, for example, or they had readers that they wanted to publish. And then we approached them, we said, you know what, we're going, we're, we're, we want to increase the quality of this work, right? So, so you're now just spreading this out or printing this uh, uh, within your own budget and doing stuff like that. Let the library take that process over and let us publish it as an open access work. Uh, uh, just offer it to students for free. Give them an option to, uh, to buy uh, a book just uh, on demand uh, uh, for, for just the printing costs. And uh, let's see what happens. And, and there were uh, not there's a, there's a number of teachers. There's a lot of a lot of people are interested in what in what we're doing. And we have now already published nine textbooks. There's six more in the making, and there's uh, a whole lot of uh, a whole lot more teachers who are uh, interested in working with us and have to have have had exploratory uh, conversations with us. So there's something growing. It's getting bigger. You get more feedback. People using it. Yeah. 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 yeah I would I would definitely say so. So. Uh, it, it might be it might be nice down later to to also show uh, the website that, that has the, these books just to have people and uh, to yeah. give people an idea what it is. But so yeah, so so what what what, what, what this is here is uh, is actually an answer to the question what's next. So what have we been chasing so far is accessibility, and um, uh, uh, a critic of what we do might say, well. Accessibility is nice, but that doesn't uh, improve the usability of this resource for me, right? So we have, for example, an excellent uh, 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 physics, we have excellent physics teachers who have uh, written a textbook on uh, uh, classical mechanics, uh, published it, but this is a PDF. So how would you want to use a PDF? Well, exactly the way it's intended, right? We're actually telling people, well, this is for free, you can use it. But you have to use it in the way that we wrote the content. Yeah, that's right. So that's and, and, and that's the thing we've been chasing so far: accessibility, making this accessible to everyone. But making it useful or making it more useful requires a different a different step. And that's do, do, do we have more slides? We are. Or we want to show the website because you you just, you want to show the website. Is that uh, possible? Yeah. Are we online here? So we, you can just give us a peek view on on the site. We try to look it up. Um, what was the biggest barrier, the biggest problem, the biggest hurdle so far? Um, that people uh, within our university feel that the library is not a place where you go to for education. So uh, we have teachers who uh, work on improving their education. And when we 
talk with, uh, with, the, the, with these teachers who also work with instructional designers and with uh, educational experts from our Education and Students Affairs Department. This department feels, uh, uh, has, 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 uh, there, there's a bit of tension with what's whose job, so to say, right? So we have adopted this way of working purely to make sure that uh, we take a role in information management, which is, which is classically not something that libraries do a lot with education or at least with educational resources. And how big is the, the, the support you got from your own university, from your own organization? Are they cheering for you? Yeah, so, so right now they are. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is something that the university is quite proud of as a, as a whole. So, um, so here we see the website. Yes, that's right. So um, uh, this is the, the basic website that we see. So the website is currently undergoing some, uh, uh, some transformation. But um, we, can, we can take a look at the book. So we have nine books now. So maybe you can scroll up. Uh, yeah, so these are nine different books. Seven out of our eight faculties are represented in, the, in this initiative. So maybe you can just uh, uh, click on that. Yeah. yeah. So this is, uh, um, uh, this is a book written by an author from uh, the architecture and uh, the built environment the, uh, faculty of the TU Delft. And uh, as you can see here, there's some basic information. Also the, the ability to download a PDF, order it, on demand with a printer and also download an EPUB in this sense. Um, these books are uh, published with an ISBN, so this makes it uh, trackable online. Yeah. So we can really see what the, in or we could really track what the impact yeah. of and, and do it because uh, Ronald also gave us some numbers of downloads that he got. Do you know some numbers or is that private yeah. info? No, 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 oh, ooh, we got it here. So oh, we do it live. So I have, well, yeah. So I have written a few things down. So like I said, we have nine textbooks. The first Dutch textbook has just been uh, published, which is interesting as well. Seven out of eight faculties are represented. Um, one of the textbooks has already been revised. It's a very important to us that this process is, uh, keeps, keeps renewing itself, right? You, you can't just throw something out there and then expect it to be up to date for eternity. So we ask our authors to consider yearly revisions. One of them has already been revised, two are undergoing revisions. Like I said, there are six books in development, and the number one uh, downloaded book has been downloaded 12,777 times since its publication in August of last year. So we are quite happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Ron with this as well. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also curious, well, what do you think of this? Did you know about this initiative? How do you feel about it? No, I didn't know of that. And I, I think it's a great initiative. I mean, uh, if we write text, um, uh, then, it, and it has a sort of a book form, why not do it like this? I mean, so there's. Great. Right. Yeah, so Great. thanks for that. Yeah, th there was a low battery. Uh, Sorry about that. Does anyone know how to change the uh, hospital? Yeah. So the interesting thing here is uh, how do we make sure the overhead for you as a teacher is as low as possible, right? So um, I was very proud to see that one of our teachers that we supported has already published three open textbooks. I forgot to mention that. We have one teacher who has published three open textbooks. He's uh, retiring soon, within a year or two. And uh, he wanted to share all of his life's work uh, uh, open access. So, uh, and he was really, really happy. He was interviewed and he mentioned that there's essentially zero overhead in this process. He can just give us uh, uh, his, his work and then uh, we, we will be put an editor on it to uh, professionalize it further and then publish it. And he has to do essentially very little work uh, once the content has been delivered. So I think that's one of the main selling points here as well. Yeah. Great, thanks for that. Any other questions, remarks, things you want to know? Or things you want to criticize? Yep. And when do we have this in Tilburg? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and who's in charge of that, Dan? <laughs> is, is it already there, Dan? This is, of course, very inspirational. Are we going to, to, to use this? Yes, we are doing this already. We are, we are, uh, it's in the making now for textbooks. We are busy with that. And can we also have this, like, maybe, um, textbook is a really ambitious thing, right? Many chapters, but. Is it not also just possible to publish like individual chapters? Like I'm still thinking about publishing yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, one of, yeah. one of them. Not only the full textbook, but also part of Modi. Yeah, one of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That, that's going yeah. To, to be part of it as well. Yeah, thanks for that. And there was a question over here. Yeah, thanks. This is very interesting. I maybe have a, uh, maybe you've mentioned it as well. In that case, I apologize. It's, it's maybe a bit of a pragmatic question in the sense that like I don't have time to write my own textbook. Um, I guess that the people who do write textbooks get paid for that specifically, and I guess that that money comes from selling those textbooks. So who writes these textbooks? Are, are they all like retired professors, or who has time yeah. to write them? Yeah, I mean, who has time to write them, and where does the money come from? I hear that as well, I think, right? Yeah, so um, 
who writes them. So we, we, we have been looking for the low-hanging fruits so far. So that, that, that is people who have already written their own readers. A lot of uh, our teachers do. And uh, these are just things that they bring to a printer. Uh, they just pay a printer a couple of hundred euros to, to print all of these low-budget uh, readers and then uh, pass them out around class and ask for 10, 15 euros for, from their students to get one of those readers. And, but this is, so we can't track the influence of these readers, what these readers are doing, right? So that's uh, what we're saying, uh, that, that's the sort of professionalization that we put, in, uh, put into that. And so far this doesn't sound like a structural solution. You, you use what you have, you use what you can use. So that's very interesting. That's a very good point. So where to move on from here is uh, essentially um, adopting a different way of thinking about how to design a course, right? How to design educational resources. Because like Nima was saying at the start, there's a lot of material out there already. So how can we find these resources that are already useful? How can we adopt this easily into our own teaching? Yeah. Uh, ideally within our digital learning environments. Um, these are the these are the real challenges that, 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 that we're facing to make this process I would say sustainable because we can until 2050 or 2100 keep uh, keep publishing new resources right this this model stops somewhere at some point all of the is this also something that like for example the board of TU Delft can do they can say well you can use now five percent of your time to do this to make your textbooks yeah so that's that. That's what we're seeing. So if, if you're talking about the finances or how to uh, make sure people invest time in this, yeah. uh, there is an, a, national, uh, uh, a national plan for acceleration of education uh, designed by SURF, which you might know from SURF Space, where yeah. you can uh, store all your data, for example. Um, uh, but SURF is, is also an, it, it's an innovation. Uh, 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 it, it's a place for innovation for educational resources. So um, uh, there, uh, and I'm also involved in that, we are working on, uh, um, on, on, on writing or, or uh, allowing for people to write in funding requests yeah. to start up these kinds of uh, initiatives. The most important thing here is, is that these are focused on community <coughs> building, right? So how can you not just as a teacher by yourself publish something, but how can you start a community of teachers, preferably within multiple institutions, yeah. who work together on designing a curriculum or re resources for the for an entire curriculum. But, but now back to her, how, how can she participate in this? She doesn't have the time. So from the current situation, if you say, I'm, I'm, I love this project, it should be done more, but I don't have the time. What would your advice then be? Talk yeah. to your boss? Or? So at, at, at this point, there are two things you can do. You can write a funding proposal to serve, for example. Uh, I'm currently doing that with a, one of our nanobiology teachers for 250,000 euros to start a community yeah. around. She, she's nanobiology. 10 funding proposals. So yeah, so that's that's quite quite large, right? So yeah. the uh, uh, the easier thing would be then to, um, uh, uh, yeah, to ask your, uh, so, Everyone, every um, every sign or every um, every researcher has their teaching yeah. responsibilities, right? One someone's teaching responsibility might be to teach a class. Yeah. Um, you could see if you can use this time to instead write educational literature. Yeah, that might be a solution. Is this practical? I mean, we're just thinking about the future, and, and I think what you made up is a very practical point, and, and I think very common for everyone. Uh, I think it would be really great if I could dedicate my teaching time to developing material, yeah. but the numbers of students are like increasing rapidly. So yeah. my, my number of students went from 400 to 1200 in four years, I think. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it, it'll be a while until they give me this time. Yeah. To so we need to talk to your boss and we need to talk to the board of Tilburg University to, to achieve it. I guess so. Yeah. So we do, thanks for that. So we do get a... Do we have another low battery? Yeah. Yeah, so, so we do get to a point where we can say maybe it's not up to you at this point to write a book. That's, uh, so that's the thing, right? Um, if you can hand off that teaching responsibility to others, that will free you up to start working on these resources. That's, uh, that's the, how pragmatic you would have to be then. Yeah. Thanks, Fred. Any other questions? Then you get a big round of applause. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Nikhil de Jong.